I built this T-Track module with a double crossover and put signals on it. When I did that video, I did not have the code quite right to make it prototypical. Well, I have the code working a lot better now and the module looks like this. Let me show you how I did this. Let's get to it. This module was a personal favorite to build. It has been a truly interesting process. I learned some new coding, including how to do Arduino libraries, and I am even attempting to match it to my first completed module so that there's very little visible of the seam between the two modules. Let's start with the code. Now, I'm not going to go all the way through it because it is a lot of code. But what it does is basically allows you to set one direction or the other as clear when the crossover is aligned straight. And then when it's set to diverge, you can pick which direction is clear by cycling through the signals using this button. I accomplished this using libraries in Arduino. These are pretty complex to explain, so I will put my code up in the description below, as well as a link to the video that helped me learn how to do this right up here. And here is the module in action. Okay, now to the detail process. The first thing we need to do is figure out where our hillside from the other module is going to fade out on this module. We line up the modules and draw a line with a Sharpie. I then grab some Sculpt Mold and form the hillside. Sculpt Mold is a great material for shaping small hills like this, but for larger hills, use things like foam or cardboard and then put the Sculpt Mold just on top as a coating. This stuff is expensive and it's heavy. Once that was done, I let the Sculpt Mold dry overnight. The next day, I grabbed some brown acrylic paint and painted the top of the module brown to simulate some dirt. I used a small brush to paint around the track and the signals. Now you can do some painter's tape. I was confident enough in my abilities to be able to do this. And if I got a little paint on the roadbed, that was totally fine. But I used a foam brush to handle the rest. Foam brushes are great for painting sculpt mold because you can get into all the little nooks and crannies. Now I could have mixed the sculpt mold with the paint to skip this whole process, but it would have also taken a lot more paint to get the same color with the amount that I was using. I let the paint dry and I could begin the scenery process. I start with the ballast. Because this is a crossover, I will not be ballasting over the ties in order to not risk the mechanism of the turnouts because Kato's mechanism for controlling the turnouts remotely is entirely internal to the turnout. I'll be working on that later. I ballast the sides with my usual process of glue, then I ballast it, then I soak it with isopropyl alcohol, then I use my 50-50 white glue water mixture, and then I let it dry. By the way, in case it's your first time seeing one of my videos, the isopropyl alcohol breaks the surface tension and allows the glue to seep in, so you're just not doing any gluing on the top and getting weird clumps. While that is going on, I can start on the other scenery. Before I do the base, I want to make a gravel access road to the signals. I will be using Woodland Scenics Gravel to do this. Now this comes in two parts. It comes with the little gravel, the fine ballast, and then it also comes with a dirt to mix over it. I paint the road in glue just to get my shape down, and then I do the gravel mixture and then clean it up a little bit. And once it dries, I'm going to add the dirt onto it at that point. Once this is done, I can do the scenic base, which I cover the module in glue and sprinkle scenery turf on it. I start with the earth blend from Woodland Scenics, and then I sprinkle over some various greens to give it that nice uneven look. Remember that the scenery in real life is not going to be a uniform green. It's going to be a mixture of browns and greens and even some grays. Who knows? But once that is done, I soak it again with a 90% IPA and then use the 50-50 mixture and I let it dry. Once this is done, I add some underbrush using these foliage mats and clump foliage from JTT Scenery. This scenery material actually can be picked up at Hobby Lobby, which is where I got mine. I just ran out and grabbed it really fast. This is where it's really about a creative eye. Go until it feels right, then soak it with your IPA and 50-50 glue mixture to set it. One thing I do is I put underbrush along the edges to help blend the seams of the module, and you'll see where that comes in handy a little bit later. 
Once it is dry enough, I can add some trees. I am once again using Woodland Scenics Forest Canopy Kits so that I can better match the end cap module. You've seen me do this process before and I will link the video that I did this at the end of this video. Basically, it comes with sedum stems and you dip them in the included scenic cement, cover it in the included coarse turf and plant it. I usually drill small holes using a like a pin vise or something in the sculpta mold to plant the trees, adding a little glue to hold it in place. After all this is done, I can add some dirt to the gravel now that it's dried enough and I can let this all finally dry out. So now we have a fully scenic module, but we need to blend it with the first module. So let's do that. We start off by connecting the modules. It's just simple Kato Unitrack snaps together. We can still see some of the sculpt mold on the side and the seam is still very obvious. So we're gonna start off by taking some of the leftover underbrush and put that right up against the seam and then have glue on beneath it. This makes the transition a bit less jarring. Now, with all of this material, you're basically going to go until this looks right. And I'm just using all sorts of spare grab material that I've used on either this module or the first module, and I'm just kind of getting the feel and making sure it looks right. And I want to get the vegetation also as close to the track I can with it looking natural, because this also helps mask the seam even better. You'll notice at this point that I'm only seeing the seam really at the track itself, which is my ultimate goal. Now, after all that is done, you can let it dry. Lastly, we are going to use my pastel chalk technique for weathering and use black pastel chalk to ground up over the track and brush it in with a bit of brown as well. This is so we can blend it, not only the ballast and the plastic together, but we can also blend the two modules together. And here it is. Check out these model railroad businesses. Scaletree.com. Scaletree.com makes hero and forest trees for HO and in scale. They also do custom trees for custom orders. Check them out at Scaletree.com. Trains in the Valley. Trains in the Valley is a model train shop located in Pennsylvania. They sell new and used model trains with a mission to make trains accessible to everyone. You can check them out at trainsinthevalley.com, link in the description. Model Railway Backshop is a great place if you're looking for a quality paint job for your old or new brass model locomotive. If you're looking to get that brass model weather, you can get that done too. Model Railway Backshop is a great place if you're looking for a quality paint job for your old or new brass model locomotive. And check them out at modelrailwaybackshop.com. Penguin 3D Workshop offers 3D prints and electronics for model railroading, specializing in hard or impossible to find train parts. And they also offer custom designing and printing. Use promo code DDRR5OFF to get 5% off your order. I'm really beginning to start moving on this new layout. I'm hoping to have phase one of the layout complete by the end of this summer in August or September, and then it'll be on to phase two. Thank you all so, so much for watching. Until next time, I'm Jimmy from the DIY and Digital. Stay safe, be kind, and happy railroading.